Hi guys, Andy here from the Sup Shack uh, Newquay. Been asked by a few people on the Sup Fishing UK page about uh, techniques and a um, fair bit of interest actually with fishing on paddleboards. I suppose paddleboards, balloons. So you know, um, it's such a versatile water sport. There's no reason why you can't take a rod with you and and snag a few fish at the same time. Um, pretty much, it's what I do in the summertime when it's flat calm. Is I've always got a rod with me uh, doing a bit of fishing, mostly um, spinning for bass, pollock, mackerel and that sort of thing. I don't really do a lot of bait fishing off them because I don't have anchors and that and I'm always drifting around in the tide. So I'm trying to make it nice and easy, as simple and basic as possible. Um, for me, it's, you know, more fun, less hassle. Uh, so I'm going to go through my equipment, what I'm using. Um, really successful uh, year once we could actually get on water this year and very successful last year. Um, so there's a few little tips and a few little things that I did that maybe uh, that made it more successful over the last couple of years. So first thing is uh, rod and reel, small small sort of lightweight um, spinning kit. So this is an Okuma Okuma Altura uh, 66. It's a 10 to 30 gram casting weight. I have I was using a 15 to 45, but to be honest. I don't really cast many lures over 30 grams because um, it's not that deep where we're fishing um, and I'm not trying to cast out that far you know sup fishing great part of it is we're actually uh, we're moving around and finding the, the fish in the spots because we can it's so easy to move around on a paddleboard and get into those little those sneaky little areas where where you'd find fish so um, real um, it's an Okuma Epixor I think it's a 30 uh, yeah, it is a 30, so it really matches the rod well, uh, nicely balanced, really nice drag. So, okay, it's, you know, it's a 6.6 six rod um, with 10 to 30 gram. So, you know, catching sort of six, seven pound bass, um, it's nice to have a good reel to back you up because uh, there's only so much the rod's going to be able to take. So a good reel with a nice smooth drag makes a massive difference, um, especially when they're diving down towards the rocks. Um, I put 12 pound line on. Uh, 12 pound I don't really go more um, and going less there's more chance of losing it in the weed you know if you get stuck in between two rocks chance are you're gonna break it off anyway but you know even in thick bits of kelp I found that 12 pound um, I can get out of most kelp so uh, again nice and basic nothing super expensive um, I have I do fall in every now and then with my equipment especially if it's quite choppy or if I've lost my balance or you know luckily not with a fish but um, you know, so I don't spend loads and loads of money on um, on kit because I know it's not going to last me that long when it keeps getting dunked in like reels. So um, yeah, so there's rod and reel. So it's a nice stiff uh, action rod. So I fish quite deep, quite slow, and I do sort of vertical twitches. So usually a double twitch and let it come back down. Reel, 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 double twitch, let it come back down. And I would say probably 80% of the takes as it's coming down, you'll see the line go bang and they're on um so that's you know i probably fish soft plastics more than anything these days i fish them a little bit deeper and slower and that for me has been a big key on catching more fish is slow and deep not flying across the surface like i used to when i was younger um another good tip that i've used and has been a, another part of the success was i do a lot of snorkeling so i take a snorkel and a mask with me when i'm paddle boarding you can unclip it especially if you've got an inflatable most inflatables have a d-ring on the front so i take the leash off hook the leash up uh, leash off the back hook it up on the front and then snorkel dragging all my kit behind me when i'm you know when there's no fish or when i'm just paddling uh, just i mean you know i love snorkeling anyway but sometimes you see pockets in fish that you didn't know were there um, and yeah, you know, I'll probably watch their behavior where they are um, and that sort of thing. And I, I've found that there was more fish a little bit deeper um, than I always thought. Um, and there was quite a bit, quite, quite, I suppose, yeah, quite a bit of bait in that same sort of area. This is why the fish were there. So fishing deeper and slower has definitely got me more fish. Um, so I'll go on to some of the lures. I'll pick out some of the more popular ones that I use that have caught the most um, or have been the most successful lures for me. Um, probably the most successful um, lures I've had um, are these here. So these are the Savage Gear slugs. Uh, what length are they? 14.5. 
sorry 16.5 centimeters so this is how they normally come you see there so what I do is I bite the head off and I get a 16 gram jig head um, sand eel jig head and I replace the head with it so I did do a video actually I think showing people how to replace them so that's how it looks like that uh, you can fish these without weight but I like to again get this deepish and then vertical twitches up it goes it looks it looks pretty mad in the water um, and I've caught fish um, you know from sort of big to actually literally just a bit longer than the lure because it's mostly latex when they inhale you know they use a vacuum when they inhale bass uh, and I think cod as well but mostly bass when they inhale they're only inhaling really that much lure because all this rest will fold in anyway so they strike at the head they get hooked so you can catch I've caught a lot of fish in them unfortunately Savage Gear have stopped making them I think I've got a couple of packs left which I'm really gutted because they've been the most successful lure for me so I'm having to find other things to use so um, really really successful lure for me in the summer was this um, Savage Gear Baby Mac Baby Mac body so obviously replacing um, representing a, a small mackerel we get mackerel here in the bay everywhere gets mackerel in the summer um, it's a much lighter head it's like a 12 gram head so I can actually get that down it works it really really works well slow and it also works well twitched um, so they have been they were absolutely golden for me um, around the middle of the summer I was catching a lot of fish on them it's a bit smaller than what I like but um, I was still getting all sorts of um, all sorts of size fish on it so if I start getting a bit uh, bit hit with or getting hit with the smaller fish I'll move on to the slugs or something slightly bigger um, but yeah so those Savage Gear Baby Max they were really really well um, I had a video actually I put a video up on YouTube and I think I put it up on the page um, with me getting like I was hammering fish after fish on these things so um, yeah nice and slow twitch slowly at the bottom vertical jigs it works all different ways um, really really successful the great thing is with soft plastics for me is they're not that expensive you're not losing seven quid 15 quid a pop getting stuck so you you can fish a little bit more dangerously that's where the fish usually are um, and you're not you know you're not sort of losing an absolute fortune every time so next ones are they're a little bit bigger than those baby max so these are the savage gear sand eels um, again same as those baby max they work really really well they're really effective lovely casting weights as well I think they're 23 gram um, well, I'm just looking because we've got some up yeah they are 23 gram um, so yeah these work really really well uh, I think they come white white's always a really popular color because um, but most bait fish are silvery or that sort of whitish color um, so yeah you can fish them nice and deep um, you can twitch them or just slow retrieve because they've got that fluke at the tail they come with like a, a spare body so if the body gets wrecked you can um, just replace it so another sort of plastic which uh, we got in that I was absolutely hammering on now the white bait and herring came in so I always try and a bit like trout fishing you match the hatch what's in the water what they're eating um, so when the white bait and herring came I got some of these which I really like because it's pretty it's weedless so very much not snag proof but less chance of snagging the fish grabs it as it pushes the body down the hook pops up bang in you go um, again works really well slow but also twitched you know obviously a bit erratic like a white bait uh, running away so um, that they work really well they come in like a greeny type color which again really really good so when we get a lot of herring towards the back end of the season uh, they do make them in slightly bigger sizes they were like they were probably one of my I think I found it hard actually to swap it even for the successful lures but they were really really well um, early season so early season I, I use these so we get a lot of prawns through the winter um, so early season we're still there's still a lot of prawns in the water spawning and that so these are like the savage gear manic shrimps I think they're called um, put a 7.5 a lead head on the tail there so um, again rocky areas where I'm fishing lots of prawns in the water or on um, 
sandbars where you get the prawns shawling up as well. I tend to fish these. You can fish them nice and deep, and the way that they go, they go down. When you twitch them, they twitch backwards like a prawn would. So, you know, prawns always shoot backwards. So twitching really slow. Great way of, uh, of getting some good wrasse as well, because obviously wrasse feed on shellfish. Um, don't use them so much in the summer, because there's a lot of bait fish around and the fish are more active. But when the fish are not so active, early season water's cold, um, I try to keep the thing keep things in the uh, in the area for more um, more time, give them more time to get it. So those manic shrimps were really, really well. I, I haven't got any on me, but um, I used them in green as well, which is a bit darker, which worked in um, more colored water. Um, so they're ones that I fish, um, that I fish all the time. I catch a lot of fish on them. We got these in towards the end, which are the, uh, blah, 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 blah. what are they called? Gravity sticks. So made by Henry Gilby, famous bass, well, famous fisherman, but famous bass fisherman. Um, so yeah, the gravity sticks, so nice latex lure. Loads of weight in the lure, so you don't actually need any extra weight. Um, it's fished what they call Texas star rigs. So again, it's like weedless, weedless. Fish grabs hold, hook comes up, bang, in it goes. So again, fishing close to the knuckle, fishing through kelp. You know, this is where the fish lay, this is where you've got to fish. Um, yeah, it's, um, they work really, really well. I got quite a few on them, but we got them quite late in the season um, when it started getting quite murky. And I tend to, when it gets super murky, I tend to not bother as much. Um, and we start getting more waves, so I do more surfing. Um, so yeah, we got the, these in. Um, I've seen good reports on people catching lots of fish. They come in all different types of tails, paddle tail, pulse tail, pin tails, different colors. Um, again, nice casting weight. And, you know, if you're losing a lure, you're not breaking the bank, you're losing a couple of quid. So towards the surface, so most of those um, I fish mid-water to a bit deeper. Depends. If they're feeding on the surface, then I'll twitch them on the surface. Um, so I use these things on the surface. So when the garfish are in, bass, love garfish. Um, or sand eels, obviously big launch sand eels. Uh, I use these. So these are what they call sort of stick baits. Um, the two different sizes there. They work really well, really effective on the surface, splashing around. They look very much like a sand eel or a garfish in the water. Um, and if it's super shallow, but there's bass around, again, use these. You're not going to get snagged up. And they, they do like a walking dog, so you twitch them from side to side, which is very much like a, um, a garfish attacking. Um, these here, so these are... Um, some sort of mullet, I can't remember, savage gear mullets. Uh, so on mullet wake, that's right. So when mullets swim in estuaries, you see them, they always leave like a tiny little V wake. Um, so these are really, really, really good again in shallow ground because you're not gonna get snagged up. They swim just under the surface. Um, they leave that little wake, they look unbelievably uh, good in the water and that is why the bass hammer them as well. Um, I haven't really caught much else but bass because again, it's quite high up and you can see it's pretty hammered. Um, but if they're not working on the surface, then I'll switch over to these. And you'll get a lot of follows with these, and you know, when they hammer them, it's uh, it is really good. I mean, it's great sight fishing anyway, when you see the, the fish come and take the lures. So that's the, that they're the main lures I use. I also use different spinners and spoons, which um, I've obviously lost, because I haven't got any left in my box. I fish spinners and spoons mostly at the start of the season, not so much towards the end. Um, so early season I tend to use them more so these are ones that they, they sort of came in towards the end of the season so these are the um, Savage Savage Gis, um what are they call seekers so these are what I'll be using early season this season um, the these type again cast them a mile you can move them nice and slow, you can twitch them, you can flutter them down, they work all different ways. But I've seen um, on different forums that people have been catching a lot of fish on these. I haven't used them yet um, because we didn't get them in literally until um, I'd sort of pat my rod away. So um, they're definitely ones to look out for, the Seekers. Um, I usually keep all my stuff in a box. So I use a waterproof box. Why a waterproof box? As I said, I do fall in. Um, and there's always a chance of falling in, especially if it's a bit choppy. So I don't want all my lures getting soaking wet and everything getting rusty. 
so I tend to use a waterproof box. Uh, that's a nice little tip because if everything gets all soaking wet, it will rust pretty quick if you don't dry it out properly. Um, I keep them all in a bum bag, so it's I think it's um, what they call a fly, like a fly fishing type bum bag, but it's quite a big, bulky bag, so I can put a drink in there, sunscreen, um, sungla uh, sunglasses, phone, whatever. There's pockets and all sorts of stuff in there. Uh, really, really good, really nice and comfortable. Um, so it's got like a, a nice sort of soft back, but it also lets air go through so it's not so sweaty. Um, so that just goes around my waist, so I don't even know I've really got it on. So again, when I'm paddling or when I'm stop fishing, I tend to make it as easy. I don't want it stuff cluttering up on my board. I don't want stuff everywhere. Just a bum bag, rod, way of holding the rod, that's it. So my the way I hold my rod, is one of these. So I made a holder for my rod. So it's basically a luggage strap. Don't know what this was. Found a piece of plastic, cut the edges off, um, put a piece of piping on there. It's like one and a half, two inch uh, PVC pipe, I guess, depending on, well, I suppose it depends on what diameter rod and that you're using. Um, cut a notch out. So this goes in my back, put the rod in, slides in. There you go, it's going nowhere. If I fall in, I can grab hold of it from my back, which is ten, what I, how I tend to fall in, I usually grab the rod. Um, you could also troll as well, um, so you can have this out the back. But when I'm paddling um, or when I'm sup fishing, I'm usually trying to train at the same time. So by having this on my back, I don't have to worry about it getting in the way on the board, I don't have to worry about it getting wet so much, um, and I can train and just paddle as hard as I can. Uh, to get the exercise in as well as then I can do a bit of fishing so don't have a lot of time in the summer because it's busy uh, in the shop and busy in general teaching so I need to um, try and cross over a bit of fishing bit of bit of exercise at the same time um, other parts of the arsenal are Polaroids so Polaroids really really important especially the way I fish um, Polaroids a good set of Polaroids you, it's amazing what you can see so you want to be fishing in those gullies, in those areas off rocks and reefs, um, those areas where they may be laying in, amb uh, you know, in waiting to ambush fish. So with po a good pair of polaroids, you can see those locations through the glare. Um, also, you can see actual fish moving um, and maybe pick them off. So good pair of polaroids. These these guys float. These are bomber eyewear. They float. So for me, no brainer. Anything that doesn't float in the sea tends to sink. Um, and you know, I've lost quite a few pair of Oakleys in my time. So I picked up a sponsor with these guys, um, not realizing how amazing the lenses are. So the lenses really are amazing. Um, you, you've got to try them on on a sunny day in clear water to, to actually appreciate them. Nice and light as well. Um, but, you know, Polaroids, good pair of Polaroids, big tip, uh, make a big difference. Plus, we would need to make sure that like at least 400 UV protection because we need to protect our eyes. Loads of glare out in the sea. So protecting our eyes, they're really, really important. Um, so that's it for the equipment I use. Again, it's very basic, very easy. Um, boards I use, so I use different ones. So I use a, a big sort of um, 10 foot 6, 32, 33 inflatable. When I take my little boy out fishing with me, stick him on the front, take him fishing. Um, I fish a lot on my race board which is probably not the greatest board to, to fish on because it's quite unstable, but I, I use fishing on it as a, as a way of really um, building my balance up and again, training. So um, I have to try and cross over and be flexible as, as possible. Uh, if it is really choppy, then I may not take the race board because I know there's a good chance I'm gonna keep going in. Race boards are great once you get moving, but when you're stable, it's not so easy. Um, so yeah, nice stable board, something that's comfortable. Something, um, you know, get used to standing on it, get used to feeling comfortable on the board. That makes a massive, massive difference. Um, you can put your uh, your rod on the front under the bungees. Just bear in mind that with chop, it, it will get wet and the reel won't last so long. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other things that I may use. Again, snorkeling. So I usually, if I've got, if I've got a few hours, I'll take the snorkeling stuff with me. Uh, just because, to be honest, I just love I love looking under the water. I love being on the water, in the water, anywhere around the water. Um, so yeah, for me, just um, any sort of bit of snorkeling kit, another excuse to get in the water and go and have a look at what's there. Um, 
any any questions or anything at all let me know we do have we have kit here i mean all the kit we have in it's nothing stupidly um expensive it's all li literally picked around um sup fishing um of course there are some rods that you know for casting offshore and that but most of it's for sup fishing and most of the lures we stock are pretty much again the same sort of way um little tip maybe if you're fishing off an inflatable just think about the lures you're using um an inflatable obviously we don't want to get a hook in it so i know a few people have asked me about going mackerel fishing on an inflatable mackerel hooks i don't know if you know what they're what they're like um oh, these are like sort of herringy type ones but look there's like five hooks there some of them have got like um six or seven that's a lot of hooks if you get what a mackerel on the top mackerel on the bottom there's a lot of hooks swinging around with an inflatable um, I would feel you've got to feel very comfortable before you do anything like that. I would say stay away from multiple hooks when you are on an inflatable. I fit, like I said, I fish mostly these here with hooks on top of the board on the lure. So even if you were to um, say this is the board here, if you were to bump it, it's not going to hook going in with the hooks dangle off the bottom like um, these surface lures here. So yeah, you know if you if you lose, you know if you just sort of I don't know. You're not really thinking about what you're doing. Hooks on the bottom, much easier to get it into the board. So at the start, um, single hooks would be um, definitely better. Again, that one, hooks, you know, if it's rubbing against the bottom on, on the board, it's fine. The hook's going to come out the top. So single hooks, hooks on top. I think these seekers, if I remember right, yeah, so these seekers, ooh, I don't know whether you can see that, they come with a treble and a single. So again, fishing on an inflatable on your own, I'd probably whack the single on because much less chance of getting snagged up on your board. So a um, few little tips, you know, be careful when you're out there. Again, hooks going into inflatables is not a good, a good thing. Um, checking tides, when to go. Um, I don't really like high tide fishing because there's not a lot of water moving and I find I don't catch anything a couple of, uh, you know, like an hour before high tide or an hour after. Every location is different. So s suss out your location, get your information um, from locals or fishermen. Um, definitely plan your route and plan your, your day. Um, know your limits. Um, but, you know, most, most importantly, have fun. Um, yeah, any any questions, any advice, whatever else, hit, uh, hit us up on the uh, Sup Fishing UK. Any pictures, whack some pictures on there. Any tips, advice, you know, get on there, start sharing uh, with each other. Um, any any bad experiences, again, share that on there because you know um, we all not we want to hear bad experiences, but we want to hear if someone's had a bad experience, so then maybe um, not get caught out the same. Um, yeah, any, anything else, you know, just uh, ask away or, you know, uh, any interest or whatever else. Again, check us out on the, uh, the Sup Shack, um, uh, the Sup Shack page. Okay. Cheers, guys. Hope you, uh, hope, uh, you had some, uh, some helpful tips and, uh, hope you get out and do some Sup Fishing and enjoy. Cheers.